Dear LP Warners, today we will be discussing young feminism and how it can be used with Chic. As you know, ITF meetings are fast paced and we don't always have the opportunity to fully explain and discuss the implementation choice of Young. However, in this video, we hope to clarify some points and provide insight on how to use Young with Chic. There are several reasons why Young can be seen complex. Firstly, Young has a strong formalism that can be challenging to work with when producing data model. However, this strict representation ultimately lead to easier implementation and reusability. Secondly, we'll be using CoreConf to represent our data model, which is relatively new and therefore may not have all the tools available that are found when we are using JSON or XML. However, the representations are often equivalent, so it is relatively easy to switch between them. Finally, Yang is typically used to manage devices, but with Chic, we will be using it in a slightly different way at a lower level. However, it is important to understand the process of extending the data model to other environments, which is what we are going to cover today. Now, it is important to note that I am not an expert in Yang. In fact, I'm still learning about it myself. However, I hope to share with you what I have learned and provide a helpful tutorial on the topic. If you have any question or feedback, please don't hesitate to reach out to the mailing list or leave a comment in this video. We will be exploring OpenChick implementation in this video. Currently, the version I use can be found on my personal repository under the TutorCoreConf branch. You are welcome to obtain a copy and play around with it. However, it is worth noting that at the time you are watching the video, the official repository may have included CoreConf and the code may have been modified. The program we will be exploring today is called datamodel.py and can be found in the example data model directory. Before we dive into the code, let's first take a look at what the program does. It starts by importing several modules including OpenChick Rule Managers, Cibor, and Youngson. The latest will help us to verify if a dataset is conformed to the Young data model. The program begins by loading a set of rules from a JSON file with the OpenChick syntax. These rules are mainly used for testing purpose. For example, we have rule 5-3, which is a co-op compression rule that includes several chic compression features such as matching lisp, repeated fields, and variable length. Rule 6-3 is a ping compression rule, and it is worth noting that the basic Young data model doesn't cover the ICMP v6 format. The next set of rules are for fragmentation, and the last one, rule 100-8, is also a compression rule. Once the rules are loaded, OpenChick verifies the syntax and displays the rule as they are stored internally. The next step is to store the seed file in the rule manager. We have two data models, one for the base chic feature, and a second one to extend it and cover ICMPv6 fields. These seed files are actually generated by a modified version of Pyong, which can also be found in my repository. It includes several parameters to facilitate the conversion process, which we will cover in more detail in a later video. Once we have stored the seed files, we can convert the set of rules for a specific device into a CBOR representation that follows the chic data model and the coreconf representation. Now that we have the CBOR representation of our rules, we can convert it into a Python structure using the CBOR model. Why the structure may not be immediately clear for a non-expert, we can see that it is more complex than a pure JSON structure, with some binary values and over that are tagged. We won't go into details of the structure in this video, but we will cover it in more depth in later tutorials. However, we can convert the core conf representation to JSON using the seed files we previously loaded. The conversion is fully agnostic and only requires our extended seed files. 
It is interesting to note that when we compare the two structures, they are equivalent. We have list and the object at the same position. The only difference is that the numbers are converted to ASCII identifier and the binary values are now base 64 strings. We can also see large integer which correspond to the identity seeds. In this example, the values are started at 1 million for the base data model and 2 million for OIM. In the JSON file, these identifiers are also clearly differentiated by the prefix. One benefit of converting the data model to JSON is that we can use Youngson to validate it. To do this, we start by loading the Young data model. In this example, the file description.json contains the Young data model for the basic chic data model and the one we define for AOM, which is not yet published. After running the validation, we can see that it works. Since the JSON notation is a direct transcription of the coreconf representation, we can assume that the coreconf data co is conform to the Young data model. There is no need to adapt Youngson to handle coreconf. Now, let's start working with the coreconf representation. It is worth reviewing some concept about how the data is structured in Young. Young uses lists where elements are distinguished by key values. This means that once you know the keys, you can access to a particular element. If you want to delve deeper into the representation, you simply need to know all the keys. To start, let's make something simple. We want to retrieve everything, so we just ask for the seed that corresponds to our model. This returns the entire model. Now, let us assume something more tricky. We want to retrieve just the first rule, 5 slash 3. To do this, we ask for the rule by its seed value. Note that we use the ASCII identifier for readability, and OpenCheck will look to the corresponding number in the seed file. The rule ID value and the rule ID length are the keys that are used to select the specific rule. So we put them in the keys list and call the function. This time, we get the core comp structure of the rule. Now, let's even go deeper and retrieve a specific value from the rule. We want to get the target value when the fill ID is IPv6 version. In the data model, the keys for the seed value are the seed identity for feed IPv6 version, the field position, and the direction indicator, which is in this case bidirectional. We are able to retrieve the value, but it is important to note that in the data model, all target values are stored in a list to allow multiple values. To get the value at position 0 in the list, we simply call the function again with the position key set to 0, and we have it. Now, let's try accessing multiple values in a list. For example, we can retrieve the second element, number one, of the application prefix list. We can also do the same to access the MSB parameters in the URI query field. Here, we use the name for readability, but internally, they are converted into numbers. Now, let's have some fun and change a value. Let's modify the op limit value. We retrieve it, store it as an integer, decrement it, and then convert it back to a binary array before storing it in the core conf representation using the value parameter. If we display the rule now, we can see that the value has changed. But what happens if we try to make a change that is not allowed by the young data model? For example, let's try to change the CDA value from value sent to not sent. The problem is that the young data model specifies that when you use not sent, the target value cannot be empty. When we try to make this change, we get an error. To fix this, we can make the change in two steps. First, we change the CDA without validation, and then we add the target value and do the validation. This time, Youngson does not complain 
on the rule is changed successfully. We can also modify an existing rule, such as rule 6 3, which is the rule for ICMP V6 compression. We can change it to a no compression rule. We can also add a rule 10 8 as a no compression rule. However, we receive two warnings. The first is that OpenShift use the value in the key and ignore the one in the data structure used for the key. The second warning is that OpenShift refused this rule because we have already a non-compression rule in the set of rules. We hope that this tutorial has helped. I'm waiting for your comments and stay tuned for other videos.